me see if I can find the switch in the dark, and three, two, one, go. Holy. And today I'm going to be talking about building a rotary spark gap for a Tesla coil. All right, now before we get started, oh, you're not supposed to see this top secret Tanner Tech project. Well, let me clean this desk real quick. All right, now before we get started, oh, this is a top secret Tanner Tech project. Here, let me clean off my desk real quick, make it all nice and clean. All right, so as you can see, my desk is all clean, except for this pesky little capacitor. Oh, there we go. And it's also got a bunch of these little wire clippings. Oops, some of these aren't magnetic. Well, let's get right into the video. So this is the object of the video. This is my rotary spark gap for a Tesla coil. Now you may not have no idea what this means, but by the end of the video, you will. To sum it up, it's basically a device that can do this. That's pretty cool. Let's get into an explanation of what this thing is, why it exists, and how it works. And to understand how a rotary spark gap works and what it's for, we first need to take a look at this Tesla coil. Now basically what a Tesla coil is, it's a resonant transformer, and it'll create some really cool high voltage arcs coming off the top. Now these arcs will be shooting in all directions when it works properly, but it hasn't worked properly yet because I don't have a good enough capacitor bank, but the rotary spark gaps works perfect for this Tesla coil. All right, let me give you a brief explanation on the basics of a Tesla coil. So you've got a high voltage source or relatively a high voltage source, maybe like 10,000 volts or something. And that's a pretty high voltage source. Now what you're going to do with this is you're going to have it you're going to have it go through a capacitor, a very high voltage capacitor and it's going to go into this primary coil. And it's going to go like that. And right here you're going to have a spark gap. Now Tesla coils can be made uh, many different ways. You can actually switch around the capacitor and spark gap and it will work just fine. So basically what happens is the high voltage charges the capacitor. Once it reaches the adequate voltage, it'll discharge the spark gap through the coil and it will create a quick pulse of an immense magnetic field of all the energy stored in the capacitor. That magnetic field will be induced into the gigantic secondary coil and every time a spark hits, it, it makes that magnetic field that is induced into the secondary coil and that giant magnetic pulse creates that cool lightning that you see coming off the top of a Tesla coil. So in some circumstances, you can make a spark gap that will make a spark depending on the length. This is the first spark gap I ever made for a Tesla coil. And as you can see, it's not pretty. It's basically a pipe with two rusty bolts going through it. And you could kind of adjust it, but not that much. And so depending on the voltage you apply, the capacitance, and uh, how far this little screw is turned in or out, you can determine the spark gap or how often the spark was going. Now, uh, determining spark gap frequency is very important because if you have a very high frequency, then sometimes the capacitor might not have enough time to fully charge before it discharges into the primary coil. And then you get very small arcs that aren't very big at all. Now, sometimes if your spark gap is too big, then it will fire sparks too often, too not often, and you'll only get lightning striking every uh, second or so, and it won't make for as good as a show. The lightning will be longer, but it won't make as good of a show. And so ideally, you'd want a spark gap that you can easily adjust. Now, this you can't easily adjust, especially while it's running. You have to turn off the test coil, discharge the high voltage power supply, twist the screw, turn it on, and see what happens. I don't like that. So that's why I use a rotary spark gap, and a lot of other people use these for their Tesla coils. Now in the spark gap, I've basically got a universal motor on the back. Then I have this piece of plexiglass with a piece of wire going through the front. I've got six bolts going around this in a uniform pattern. And what happens is these bolts are adjustable. And so every time this piece of wire crosses across two bolts, it'll let uh, electricity conduct across here uh, through the wire into the other side. And then once they go out, it'll pull off the arc really quickly and it will go on to the next one. So by determining the speed of this little inside part, you can determine the frequency at which your spark gap interval happens. 
Now the cool thing about using a universal spark gap is that there's almost no sparks. And now you may think that's counterintuitive, but it's actually a better thing for your Tesla coil. Because there's no sparks, there's less energy being lost as heat and light in the sparks. And therefore there's more energy going into your Tesla coil and you're getting bigger sparks and it's a lot better. So let's take a look at the back and how this works. Now a universal motor can work with AC and DC. It uses a commutator system and unlike a normal DC motor, the magnets are actually electromagnets. Sorry Tesla. And what happens in this universal induction motor, which is used in blenders and all kinds of applications, is that you can vary the voltage being applied to the motor, and that will actually vary the speed of it, unlike a normal uh, induction motor. And this makes it very useful because you can spin it at different speeds using a variable voltage source such as my Variac, which is hiding back here. So I just have the Variac connected to the universal induction motor. Everything's set on this plate. The induction motor is actually bolted to this front piece of plywood. The plywood has the spindle on it and all the screws bolted in. All these wires are connected via these little nuts or I forgot what you call them, clamps or crimp on things. So the spark gap is actually very useful for a Tesla coil purpose. As you can see when I turn this when I turn this thing on, I can spin it very slowly. That is a very slow speed it's moving at. And I can also crank it up. I may need to hold this down a little bit. And that's not even full speed. I'm afraid to run that thing at full speed. That uh, spark gap was running at a very high speed. That thing was only running at like 50 volts. Imagine this thing at 110. That's fast. Let's go ahead and test this out with these very heavy uh, Leyden jar capacitors that I made in a previous video. All right, now I realize that it's probably not in my best interest to run this capacitor and spark gap bank right next to my very sensitive electronical equipment, such as my oscilloscope and power supply and ham radio stuff. So let's teleport this stuff somewhere else where it's less likely to disrupt uh, valuable electronics. Well, there we go. It looks like it's tra been transported to a safer location. Oh, I just stepped on something. Well, anyway, I've got my spark gap in parallel with my capacitor bank, in parallel with my ZVS driver down there. Got everything in parallel. I will fire this thing up and you'll see some big sparks. So let's turn this a little bit. You should probably see some sparks in just a second. Oh, oh, it's charged. Are you ready kids? Woo, that was cool. All right, now you guys thought that was cool in the light. Now imagine what it's gonna look like in the dark. Power charged, oh, I can hear the electricity crackling. Now you may be wondering why when you look at the spark gap you see three uh, still images where it's right here, right here, and right here. Now I'm not sure if you can see that exactly on camera, but I can see it in person and it looks really cool. Now the reason our eyes see all three at once is because our eyes are very slow. It's like when we look at a television screen, the line is actually rastering up and down the screen very fast and our eyes see the whole picture as one even though it's just a scanning line. That's kind of how this works. Well anyway. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something about a spark gap, uh, rotary spark gap. And maybe sometime when I get some new capacitors, I will make that Tesla coil way better. Now I've actually ordered some new capacitors for this. I got a very generous super chat donation in my last live stream, and the guy said it was to get some new capacitors, and I'm using it to buy some new capacitors. So I'm buying about 20 15,000 volt, uh, 390 pico varied capacitors, and hopefully I'll be able to run this uh, Tesla coil very good. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.